it's been going on for quite a while and for that reason uh, there are times when we feel that if we don't take care we would miss the balance you know and and get a group of boys who feel neglected and would therefore not be you know as involved in society as they should be I know it's happening in the US mm -hmm. and in the UK in Canada you know a stress on the uh, girl child education is now becoming a little lopsided mm -hmm. the girls are studying they are being very d diligent and so on mm -hmm. and unfortunately the boys are paid affirmative action from men exactly <laughs> you, you, you need to get the balance you need to get the balance anyway I'm Joyce Everybody calls me Auntie Joyce, almost everybody calls me Auntie Joyce, which makes me feel, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm the auntie of the whole nation, which is very nice. I'm involved in um, a Christian ministry. It is not a church. It is not even a fellowship. It's called Salt and Light Ministries, a name that I took from Matthew chapter 5 and verses uh, 13 to 16 where Jesus says that we should be the salt of the earth and the light of the world and so what we do is to use the media to draw attention to the fact that our faith is a way of life and not a religion you know, because when, when, you, when we talk religion, we're talking more about rituals and do's and don'ts and so on. But when we take it that our faith is about a relationship with God. And if it's a relationship with God, then this same creative God, the one who speaks and it is, would really empower us to make a difference. Because if, he, if he's taken us as his representatives, as indeed the Jews are his representatives on earth, then we are supposed to make the earth better. We're supposed to draw people close to God so that using the empowerment that God offers, the transformation that God offers, we wouldn't just talk religion. I think in Ghana we talk religion because it is very difficult to see how a religious country can be measured or even can be, um, how shall I say it, can be perceived as so corrupt. It, it, it is a total contradiction of our faith. Good question. Is Ghana more religious than other African countries? And in fact, in, in Ghana, Almost 70% of the population professes to be Christian. 70%. 70? 70. 70. 70. You know, so if, if that is the case, Islam is about 11%. 11? 11. Yeah. You know, so if that is the case, then how come? So our little bit is to use the, if we do some radio Bible studies, um, and then and every time we try to make things practical and then we write in uh, two of our newspapers one comes out on Friday uh, and one comes out on Saturday and we again talk about how the faith is practical in fact at the moment in one of the papers the one that will be coming out on Saturday um, we're talking about letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. So this is what we do. And then we organize uh, leadership training programs where we match our faith the, with our lifestyle and the responsibility that we have. You know how easy it is to point fingers at someone else doing the job? And we fail to recognize that we are part of the someone else. So this is what we try to do. We are also very strong on music, choral music, sacred music, and we do a lot of programs to promote Ghanaian composers, to also get involved in other compositions. We need to get some Israeli um, composers, <laughs> lovely, to sing their songs. And you have to be.
taught in Hebrew, we will not sing it in English. Okay. Right. I'll talk to the ambassador. The ambassador and his wife are also good friends. Incidentally, at the last um, semi the seminar we had, um, we had a group. My my kids came to sing. Yes. They are they are yes. now. And uh, they sang it. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So you remember? Yeah. I I think that Israel and Ghana have a lot in common. A lot of our uh, festivals and funeral uh, rites and so on are so close to the Israeli way of life. In fact, we are not ashamed to say that we descended. We descended okay, from Israel, you know, and um, and so there's always this affinity. Personally, personally. I'm in love with Israel. There's no way. I mean, there's no way you're going to move me away from that. And my reason is simple. My reason is simple. I mean, if you take a small country that has survived the worst of, you know, attacks throughout what I read from the Bible, what has happened since the Bible was written, what I've experienced, there must be a reason why Israel still exists. And I find that reason in the Bible. And so I believe that Ghana also as a country that wants to provide leadership in Africa ought to have good relationships with a country that knows how to survive. A country that knows how to be resilient, a country that knows how to stand alone and focus on what it knows is right. I think these are some of the fundamental reasons why Ghana and Israel has to have uh, a strong bond, a strong bond, um, education-wise. I mean, come to think about it, modern Hebrew is one of the newest languages, isn't it? Yes, it's one of the newest languages. I mean, here's a country that was dispersed, you know, with people speaking different kinds of languages that comes together to start a new nation and decides that we can go back to the language that was spoken many years ago and yet make it so modern. So, aside of biblical Hebrew, you have the modern Hebrew. And I think it's phenomenal. Here's a country that has turned a desert into a blossoming green field, I would say. I think that if Israel hadn't done that, maybe Palestine wouldn't be so <laughs> jealous and wanting <laughs> to the land. Could you tell us a little about your personal past? How you came to... Oh, well, I'm a what young girl history? of 70. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> One second. What's oh. <laughs> Good answer, good yes. answer. You're making friends. Uh, I grew up in Kumasi. Father died, so my mother had to raise us by herself. She was a, a middle level civil servant, so uh, she struggled to put us through school. But all the time, she made us know that uh, first, contentment with what you have makes a big difference. Too hard work doesn't kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that uh, education is absolutely important, and that um, uh, education enables you to, you know, break through glass ceilings and and so forth. You know, that makes you socially mobile. So, you know, this is how I grew up. How many siblings? Uh, five. So there five. were six of you? No. S yes, six, total. six of us. One died much earlier okay. and another one has died. So now there are four of us. And how old were you when dad died? Seven. Seven. My older sister was eight. My brother was, uh, I think, three. Yes. 
my brother was three. Since, you know, after that, my mother had uh, uh, another relationship and had two boys, you know. And what did you study in school? English. Yeah. What was your um, vocation after college? Public relations okay. or communications, you know. So, but I worked in the public service and then later on in the private sector, you know. So I'm happy. I've done many things. <laughs> 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 really? <laughs>